Yo, what's going on guys? Chris Pony here, Overtime Athletes. Part three of the three-part series, Programming Plyometrics, general phase, the third phase of that. And it's going to be all about what we consider the concentric phase of the actual plyometric or that dynamic movement. Um, and really start to get a little bit more specific for what we're trying to accomplish or what stimulus we're trying to apply to that athlete that will uh, directly translate over to what they're trying to do. Now again, this was general, so this is for general plyometrics, anybody trying to increase their explosive capacity. So anytime I say specific, I'm talking sport specific, but um, you know, whatever that, that particular goal is for that uh, person or that athlete following this, this is when you get specific with it. So in the beginning, for the first couple, uh, for the first uh, little bit that I would be focusing on would be production of force. All leading up to this, we taught the body how to absorb force. We taught the body how to absorb force and then transition into production of force at a low level. This movement would be all about putting it together. So when you talk about your, your standard broad, your standard vertical, your approach box jumps, your approach hurdle jumps, um, it could be connected jumps, anything where we're really focusing on that max effort, uh, whether it be vertically, horizontally, um, or laterally. Uh, that's where I would be really focusing on moving that bar. So this is the time where, you know, if we're practicing box jumps for the first couple phases, this is where I'd really try to move the height up, right? If we're doing hurdle jump, this is where I'd really try to increase that. If we're measuring broad, hey, this is where I'm testing you out. We need to be in this upper percentile every time that we jump. The next one would be integrated plyos. And integrated plyos are essentially would be, now I'm going to add maybe an element of horizontal with a lateral, or maybe a vertical with the horizontal, whatever might be specific to that athlete of what we're trying to accomplish with them. So a lot of kind of different connected where we're integrating different movements. You can also think of integrated as adding some kind of resistance and then being able to, uh, with that resistance, um, performing either some kind of a twist with your jump. Uh, anything where you're integrating multiple components into a plyometric style movement. Um, and remember, plyometric doesn't necessarily have to be just jumping, it can also be that explosive movement. Anything where we're really trying to utilize that stretch shortening cycle, that transition phase, be able to use that elastic, um, you know, that stored energy and be able to produce more force. That's really what, what you have to wrap your mind around when we're talking plyometrics. And then finally, like I said, sport specific. If that particular athlete or that particular person, let's say they're trying to uh, accomplish a higher vertical jump, this is where they would actually focus on, you know, jumping with the actual sticks. If it was a vert uh, broad jump, they're actually measuring themselves out. Um, if they're somebody who's trying to get better at a particular sport, um, let's say basketball, I would have them maybe hold a basketball, maybe do some kind of a drop step onto a box. Things that are going to start to mimic closely of what they're trying to accomplish or what they're trying to achieve. This section here um, is where I tend to get a little bit more creative. A lot of times, like I said, a lot of times the tools in the weight room, that's just what they are, they're just tools. We're trying to apply a stimulus to be able to transfer over so that on their given sport, they can go ahead and amplify that, right? Amplify their physicality. So this is the section down here where I might get a little bit more creative with some of the things that I do. Um, I'm test, constantly testing and thinking outside the box, but if it mimics the same motion, why not be able to achieve it here in training in a more condensed, um, uncompromised situation? Uh, so that's pretty much it when it comes to concentric. I know it's not as in-depth as the others, but you have to understand it really comes down in that phase three. What happens is it comes down to, to how that athlete is responding to the stimulus you're applying. So there might be times where I'm, I'm just, I'm still, right, we're in the last phase of this and I'm still focusing on actually teaching the athlete to absorb. I've had young athletes in here who are just kind of walking around like Bambi or like they're in stilettos and they might essentially just need to continue to focus on learning how to absorb force eccentrically uh, through their lower limbs. So it's just one of those things where it really depends on the athlete and I have to continue to say that. But from a general sense, this is, this is kind of the outline or the blueprint that I typically like to follow. Hope that helps. I'll see you guys next time.